In last week's video, we drilled and cut the rough shape of the keel timber, and we had some help come weigh the lead and start cutting. We also ended with a little teaser of us chainsawing some lead, which we'll get into in this video. It's amazing how many derelict boats there are out there just sitting on the hard. Our project is an excellent opportunity to do some good and recycle all that still usable hardware and lead in these boats. So we're here. Destroy that. Put it in here. So we came kind of armed for bear. I've heard varying opinions on what's best to cut up a sailboat. So we brought the generator, so we have power, a bunch of extension cords, and we've got the drill and the sawzall on the boat already. We brought the chainsaw. This bag is all the impact drivers and all the batteries. And this one's got hammers and screwdrivers and hole saws and wrenches and pliers and vice grips, anything you can think of. This is all bits and sockets. We have two different angle grinders, two different scale saws, a bunch of blades. This is all safety gear, gloves, respirators, face masks, plenty of food and water. As you can see, truck, we're not expecting this to be an easy job. Cutting up fiberglass is actually one of the worst jobs we've ever had to do. We also got some pry bars, some pipes, shovels to clean up with. We got the acetylene torch just in case there's something we need to heat up. Uh, a couple different jacks and wedges that come along, the chain, tie down straps. So hopefully we have everything we need. Brought basically the whole shop with us, except for the nice woodworking tools. <laughs> This was actually one of the most exhausting and uncomfortable days yet. It was too hot for us to be wearing Tyvek suits, we'd probably die of heat exhaustion. But it also was intermittently rainy, which just made it that much worse. Cutting up fiberglass makes basically a powder, and these are all these tiny little hairs or tiny little fibers that just get into all of your pores. Once they're in there, it's like tiny razor blades. Any movement, any rubbing against it is just uncomfortable to say the least. And so with the rain it basically made a slurry and this stuff just got everywhere. So it was a miserable day but we made it happen. We got a lot from this boat, especially a full lead keel to add to our pile and a lot of bronze hardware. Now back to the compound and the job at hand. The very old tractor does not really have brakes. All right. I can maybe possibly slow it down. Can't maybe. really stop on a dime. There's um, no brakes. <laughs> yeah, there are no brakes. So be very conscientious of it. If you're helping and I'm coming near you, make sure that you can get out of the way and don't bank on me stopping. We now had two lead keels, which are going to become part of ours. Before we can use them though, we had to figure out exactly how much lead we have, including all the loose stuff that we had already. So these need to be cut up into manageable pieces. Call it the persuader. Whenever something like this doesn't quite want to move, go get the big bar. Or if someone doesn't want to quite do what they're told, <laughs> you get the big bar. Let's get the tools consolidated over here out of the way. Since lead is soft enough, one of the best ways to cut it up is actually with a chainsaw. It's a pretty neat thing to see. Just, you gotta be careful to not get the lead too hot because then it'll melt and it'll kick back into the saw. 
And if that cools down in there, it's just, it'll just seize the entire thing up. The red stuff that we're leaking on there, that's bar oil. It helps lubricate the blade so that it goes through the metal easier. It also keeps the heat down a little bit since it avoids friction. Oh my god! I'm coming, Olivia. Too big, huh? It's, it's heavy. <laughs> it's like they're magnetized. Yeah. <laughs> so that one's about. <laughs> it just be what it is. Let's see if the old farm boss is cool off here. Yeah. Yeah. Time to shift gears and go back to shaping the keel timber. While I was at work, Steve got a large part of the keel timber sawn off. There was still a lot more to do. The large offcuts on the end could be used for other parts of the boat, but the rest was just going to get chopped away with an axe or an adze, which is what we're going to show you how to do now. So, as you can see, the keel timber is kerfed. We did that with a chainsaw. And a kerf is just a cut, or a lot of repetitive cuts, all down to a specific line with the intent of removing all of this as waste. So if you think about the tree as a bunch of big straws that go up, this curve of the cut makes it so that some of these straws run a little up at an angle, or maybe they run down to the body of it a little bit and these kerfs break those grain lines so when we cut them all we have to worry about is this amount of grain as opposed to this amount of grain if we space the kerfs out a lot more and now when they get to this point you can just go through and whack them off really easily with an adze, a chisel, a draw knife, an axe, just about anything. And so we can remove a lot of waste very quickly and very aggressively and not really worry about running into any of the timbers below. Let me get closer. That grain starts to be an issue. So see we're getting stuck here. So what we can do now Do some relief cuts. I can get in there and see what's going on. 
breaker off. And then you just repeat that all the way down the lug. What are you saying? So it's really nice to see the shape of it. Yeah, it's impressive. Yeah, it really is. She's beautiful. When it was a big piece of wood, it just looks like a big piece of wood, but now it's like, it's now still it's a, a big piece of wood, but, but it's, it's a shape. part of something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Pretty freaking cool. Good. We'll do this to the rest of the top of it here. Give it a coat of oil, flip it, do the same treatment to the other side, but probably with the ads instead of the axe now that we have the new handle. Give it all a really good coat of oil, wrap it up, and let it sit for a while and see what it does. And probably, I don't know, three or four weeks, we'll flatten the top. Let it sit for a bit, and if it stays flat, finish cutting it to shape. Pretty exciting. Yeah, it is. So that's the pattern. I go through with big hits and I rough it up and make some big chips and then I work my way up and bust up those bigger chips into smaller ones. It's taken some getting used to. Axe work I've done my whole life. This is the first time I've ever really owned or used an ads. So it's definitely a bit of a different swing, a little different feel, but I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Any of you uh, ads men or women out there, if you have any pointers, I'm all ears. But seems that knocking the big stuff off with the ax works well. And I can bring it down close enough to the ads that the scrub plane finishes it up, which is great. A lot easier than doing it with the chisel and the mallet. Give her a sweep and onto the scrub plane. And this is what a scrub plane is made for. So it has an iron, the cutter, that's curved. So if you look really closely, you can see it takes these like scalloped slices out of the wood. And then it just has a single, what they call dumb iron. So it's just one straight blade. There's no chip breaker on it. There's no anything crazy. It's super, super simple. And with this blade, because it's just made for this rough work, you don't even really bother honing it. I just take it into my slow speed grinder and I treat it like I would one of my tools for uh, turning. And I just regrind the edge a little bit, throw it on the buffing wheel for a second and call it a day. It doesn't have to be perfect. And for the hardwood, you just set so a little bit sticks out. And if we were taking softwood down, we could stick this out and take a cut that was almost a quarter of an inch deep and do it pretty efficiently. Um, so you can see it just takes these grooves out. And it works really well either across the grain or like 45 degrees to the grain. It doesn't work so well with it. It's all right, mama bird. Do your thing. We don't care. <laughs> the bandsaw didn't get much use this spring, and a cool thing actually happened. It ended up being occupied by a family of birds. <laughs> There's some new life in the old bandsaw. I don't know what kind of birds they are, but Mama made a nest. And we've got four little chicks in there. You can see them. A very angry parent bird. They don't like us by the bandsaw. But looks like the chicks are almost ready to leave. So that'll be good. You think should have gotten used to us by now. Yeah, you think. So I'm just using the scrub plane to get it down to about this level of flat and smoothness. 
Just enough that when we go to mark it out and cut it for real, because this is a bit wider, thicker, fatter than we need it to be, we can see exactly what's going on. And we can also make sure that the oil gets down into every nook and cranny. So what you don't want is there to be like the main part of the wood and then for there to be a big sliver that kind of sticks up and then you can't get the oil in there and that's not good. So we're just down enough that we can pretty much see everything. We're not going too crazy because all this is going to get cut and reshaped later anyways. With the keel timber roughly shaped, we covered it in a mixture of linseed oil, kerosene, and copper naphthenate. This solution helps the timber from drying out too fast and the copper naphthenate acts as an antifungal which stymies rot and pests. Farther down the line, it should also help against worms. Next week, we get into making the bow and stern timbers. Some pretty cool things. We end up gluing laminations in order to get large enough timbers, and we even do a little steaming.